Second one failed the divergence there, yes? 15 is a good one. How did you approach 15? Okay, so direct comparison test, you're gonna compare it to one over n, I assume, yeah? Um, n minus one is less than n, so n minus one is greater, oops, one over n minus one is greater than one over n. And so the sum of 1 over n minus 1 is greater than the sum of 1 over n. Is that a conclusive test? Yes. It is. It's infinite. Greater than infinite is infinite, so it is conclusive. What if it had been n plus 1? It would fail. Now what would you do? Just say, oh, well, I guess it's a quit? Yeah. No, you would then use a different test like <laughs> the integral test. Okay. So you would, your conclusion should be something like the series 1 over n minus 1 diverges because it's greater than 1 over n which diverges. Why does it diverge? Harmonic. Yes. All right. Today's topic is rough. This, and I'm talking, this is a Taking into account, you're really paying your attention to detail. It's still hard. Wait, there's uh, a question I don't have any. Oh, um, First of all, polar areas part uh, two, three, four, and five. Here it goes. If you graph r equals four, what's the graph look like? A circle centered at the origin. Oops, that is. It's two. It's two. Two. Must be don't calculate something. All right. Yeah, maybe we'll do a calculator. We'll see. Okay, so r equals two is here. Yay. All right, four cosine theta, what's that? Uh, on the y or the x-axis. So a circle on the x-axis, sure that, okay? So we're looking at those two graphs, yay? Which should be the same size, but the eyes fail. All right. All right. Uh, now, this graph then, let's talk area inside R2 and outside R1. I will give you a parallel. Now, you guys, like I said, are pretty stinking brilliant. You are. So, it is probably, it was probably easier for Miss Cannon to teach you the ins and outs of area. But, for example, when you do this area here, it is pretty stinking hard to communicate to the students just learning how x versus y pans out. x goes this way and it means two integrals, y goes this way and it's one integral, and then you have to take into account which is easier to integrate and all that stuff. That said, when you do x and y, you do rectangles, and they're either horizontal or vertical. It's important to polar that you realize you're not talking rectangles, you're talking either triangles or sectors, depending on how you look at it. The formula is dependent on you drawing <coughs> sectors out from the origin, little slices or wedges out from the origin. So if I talk about the area inside the red circle, but outside the blue circle, am I thinking about that right? Would you, first of all, lightly shade that region? 
inside the cosine circle but outside the origin circle. Isn't that here? Yeah? All right. Now, in terms of rectangles versus sectors, it's like you tried to find this sector coming out from the origin, but you removed that. So it's just these spokes, if you will, from the origin with the inner parts of those spokes or triangles removed. You tracking? Now, just like rectangles, when you talk area under a curve, remember back in the day when I found this area between F and G? Couldn't I find the total area under F in one integral and then subtract away the total area under G in one integral? But we typically do that in, or rather than in two integrals, we do it in one, right? Same goes here. Uh, we could do this in two. We could take the area all the way to the red and then in one integral and remove the area in the blue but in another integral, but it's easier to do it in one. So, with symmetry, there is symmetry to this. Let's go two times a half from, now, from where to where? Zero to... Yeah, when 2 equals 4 cosine of theta, which is when cosine of theta is 1 half, which is at theta of pi over 3. Okay? Now the integrand. Outer area minus inner. What do you, what'd you do? Well, I think I would do the red one first. The red one, so that's? R2. R2, which is? 4 cosine theta. Square? No, it's the variable. Square? Yes. Yes. Square. Square. Yes. Representing the area if you went all the way out to the red. But remove the area inside the blue, which is minus two squared. With respect to R or theta? Theta. All right. That would give you your answer, thank you. And you'd be rolling. So far, so good? Okay, now draw the figures again, please. And then draw, oops, I just used the wrong color. There and there. Same graph, totally different question. This is find the area inside R1, so inside the blue circle, but outside R2. So where would that be if you were to shade it in a spoky kind of way? So draw me some spokes. Okay, if I wanted to shape this area in a spoky kind of way, it would be here, yeah? Here, shape, 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 shape. You follow? Okay, now, <coughs> the thought process here is different than this. This is upper minus lower. No upper minus lower here. Outer minus inner. Okay. Now, how many integrals will I need? Two. Two. Two integrals. There are two regions. This region here, totally different than this region. Okay. If I draw a spoke here, do I want that whole spoke? I do not want that whole spoke. I want this part of the spoke, so I need to take the whole, take away that part. I do not want that inner part. But over here, do I just want the whole blue? Yes. yes. Two situations. Two totally different outer minus inner. Okay? We've got to do in two, and then there is symmetry, so we can do symmetry. Okay? So let's go with two 
times the first region. What's the starting point of the region? Remember, we're going this way. Theta in a d theta positive way, we turn this way. So pi over 3, 2. Pi over 2 is the end of that outer minus inner region. Okay? Um, it's the outer squared minus the inner squared. The outer being 2 squared. In this case, the outer is 2, and the inner is the cosine curve. Okay? Then I would need to. Just kind of go around the second line because it gets too long. Double. Actually, I, again, I'm, just, I'm using symmetry, but you could not use symmetry. The second region on the left hand side of the graph, what are the limits? If I use symmetry, pi over 2, pi. And what's the area of that left hand? Third and fourth quad, second, third quadrant, two squared. Okay. Could you also do that left hand side geometric? Sure. Okay. All right. Questions? Oh, okay. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Let's try one more. Let's go blue and red. Okay, now we're talking area inside both. So start and draw spokes, 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 and so on. How many integrals do I need? Two. Two. It might help to have a really oh, I thought, I thought it was like all of them. big picture. Watch as I draw spokes to the blue, 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 but now it's to the black. There are two integrals because partially it points to black. I don't think so. Okay. Oh, sorry. To be inside both, you have to, once you get here, you had to have to hit up here. Only by going in here would I be inside the black and the blue. If I kept going to the blue, but now all of a sudden I'm not possible. Yeah? All right, so it's going to be two regions, and we'll use symmetry again. Two, oops. Two times a half. What's the first region here called? Region one. Uh, from where to where? Zero pi over three. And what's the integrand? Two squared. Okay? Plus, I'm just going to go to the next line, plus 2 times a half from where to where? From pi over 3 to pi over 2, that's when that cosine curve would be down to 0 of an r. If cosine was 0, then you'd be here, so it's cosine to pi over 2, that's a 2. And what's the integrand? Yeah, now we're inside the red, so that's four cosine theta. Don't forget to square it. And we'll get you follow? All right. Now, yes? Yep. So this, my picture's a bit of a mess now, but this blue, red, uh, blue triangle, right? Go to draw out to the outer figure, but always staying within both. If I want to be within both here, I would have to stop at the blue circle here, right? But the minute I get to up here, I can't keep going to the blue circle because then I would actually leave the black circle. So I'm getting two regions because at some point 
and need to go to graduate school. Okay, in the big picture, helps. All right, um, would you get out your calculator? Let's do a calculator active one, please. Put those in your calculator, 2 plus sine is 4 plus sine. Theta is in the pi button menu. Theta is right in here. In the pi sub menu, you'll see a theta. Uh, you do. In, if you're in polar mode, you have to use theta. You type x, it will not know what you're talking about. So once it's in polar mode, it expects theta to be in the same area. All right. Um, and then what's the other one? Four cosine theta. Or cosine theta. Uh, keep in mind, as always, that the graph space is stretched. Oh, is it? Sh it should be square. It shouldn't. It? Will it look square? I guess I'm thinking still on the D4. Sorry, it's quasi circular, kind of. Yeah. Are you with me? I'm gonna get these out of the way. So. Ooh. It's a little snippy, geez. Nice. I bet it looks weird because I like the way that the graph is all of it. All right. Okay. <laughs> now, you'll need the intersection points of the course of this problem. There is not symmetry to them, so you need to find them both. Find the intersection points. Are you finding the intersection points? Here's a trick question. Your calculator will say, no need. Hey, why, is, why is the graph not like Hard circle? Yeah, this is a Lima sign, so it's, it's kind of a simple thing. So like, doesn't that have to be concave or something? It's, it's, it's the anti very end. It's the last concave. Just past the one and two, it should be concave. Okay, so um, your calculator doesn't find intersection points in this mode. So sadly, you're going to have to now change to function mode. Go to function, grab a graph entry, change it to function mode, and go 2 plus sine of now x. If it bothers you that the graph is busy, then you can dump it, but I'm just going to graph on top of the polar graphs. It is what it is. Then... Or cosine of x, cosine, cosine of x. Okay, so what are the two intersection points that I'll need to find? What are the, where do I look for the two intersection points I'm interested in? Okay, this one, I know this one could be either fourth quadrant or negative. Uh, you know, a, a fourth quadrant angle or just a negative from the first. I think it'd be easier if you find that in a, you know, a slightly negative angle with it. So that would correspond to this intersection point of the sinus. Are you with me? No. The place where these polar graphs meet, we need that to find the polar area. That point corresponds to a just slightly less than zero radians intersection point on the sinusoid. These two sinusoids meet there. That is the intersection point that you need to store. Right there, that intersection point corresponds to that intersection point in the polar territory. You with me? Find that intersection point, store it to A. The X value. Ah, what is going on? Did you get negative 1.309? Yes. Okay. I'm going to call it A. Find the other intersection point that's just right of the y-axis. 
<laughs> Did you get 0 0.819? Okay. You have those down. All right. Now let's talk about problem by problem, each case and the shape and such. All right. So you've got the Lima sum is at two, three, two, one. And the cosine curve is more like a circle. My job's a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. We have these. I'm going to report these on my picture, so I can just refer to them as A and B from now on. In the AP test, if somewhere in your work you say, hey, let A equal this, let B equal that, then you may call them A and B. What is A but negative 1.309? Though it's stored. And B, this first quad intersection point is 0 0.819 radians B. You with me? From now on, we're going to call them A and B. Okay, now let's talk shading. The area inside R2, which is the circle, but outside the limousine. Inside the circle, outside the limousine. Draw slopes from the origin. Inside the circle, but outside the limousine, they look like those. How many integrals will I need? Just one. Just one. Okay. The integral of E, is there symmetry to this? Yes. Uh, no, there might be. I don't know. I don't feel like there is. So let's go. Just one half of the integral from A to B <coughs> of what integral? Or cosine theta squared to represent the outer minus two plus sine theta to represent the inner. Check. Um, you'll find that you know how functions we have lots of names f of x, d of x. Polar, you pretty much just use r, so you're gonna pretty much gonna see why we define. All right. All right. Um, Let's go to the next idea. Same graphs. Two, three, two, one. Okay, but this one is really Lima Sun, terrible Lima Sun, but Lima Sun nonetheless. Circle. All right. Area inside R1, outside R2, which means inside the Lima Sun. Outside the circle. Inside the Lima sun, outside the circle, drawing spokes out from the origin. Okay. How many integrals do you feel? Try again. Three. There will be three. Okay. So there's a little outer minus center here and a little outer minus center here plus the this one as it was there. So give me the first region. I'll call it region one. One half from where to where? B to pi over two of what? So the outer, yeah, Lima sine, two plus sine. Is it Lima, was it R minus R all squared or squared minus squared? Squared minus squared. Two plus sine squared minus four cosine squared. Okay, that's region one plus region two. Somewhere to where? Over two, three pi over two, and what's the integrand? Two plus sine of theta, just straight up the way it is. Plus region three, which is 
from where to where? Careful. You gotta aim it as you go backwards. Be careful, yeah. Three pi over two to three pi. Three pi over two, so now you're thinking, all right, so good job. But gosh, that would have definitely got me when I was your age. You guys are way smarter than I am. Three pi over two to B is a no, because if you went three pi over two to, or A, rather, right, sorry. If you went three pi over two to A, where would that go? Over. It would go over. That's not the area you want to find, okay? So going from three pi over two is here towards a is that way. So that is not, that, that would be negative, first of all. That's negative area. You're changing theta in a negative way, or you're decreasing it. So that's uh, not what you want. So why would it be like that? Yes. It would be like going this way in your bounds in x. You're, you're going to get negative area by going backwards. dx is negative. If you go from the smart, so what is, so there are two ways to deal with this. Give me one. Okay, so one is one is to go from negative pi over two to a. So that works. Okay, uh, and it's outer minus inner again, yeah. Or what else? Three pi over two to two minus. Yeah, you'd have to go two minus that. That's uh, that's why these are hard because sometimes you have to do quite a bit of thinking. This guy, the second time around, is um, that angle plus two over pi. Would it be two Wait, pi minus that or just two pi away from a? Two pi minus a or just two pi plus a? When's the next time this is going to be around? If it was A here, then when's the next time it's going to be around? 2 pi more than where it was, so it's 2 pi plus A. But A is negative, so it's all good. A is negative. So you're okay. All right. Now, this then uh, is pretty rough uh, the way Sydney suggested, so I'll use a little shape. Yeah? Are you with me? Okay. I lost. All right. So good news for you is tomorrow we're just going to do hundreds of these and you'll flail around and fail miserably and after that you'll be successful. Okay, uh, let's move along. Area inside R1 and R2. Two, one, two, three. Oh, sorry. Should I have completed the underground? What's the outer here? Yeah, it's the Lima Sun Lima. And then the circle is in there. Okay. Last but not least. Inside bolt. Draw spokes. Inside bolt. Inside bolt. How many regions? Look very carefully in here. Three. Three. There's three. Yeah, there's three. In here oh, is a little region. It's like we have to blow it up. Yeah, yeah that's the blown up region. Then there's the region to the Lima Sun, then it heads back to the circle. So there's three regions there. The first one, let's go. Let's. Uh, Let's do this lower region first, okay? What's that region? No thank you. Okay, now remember, A is a negative angle. So, to, from what region? Negative pi over two to A. Pi over two or negative pi over two? Negative pi over two to A, that's true. And what are you going to? Is it an outer minus center or just straight up the circle or just straight up the Lima circle? Feels, feels like you're to the red circle there. So that's the circle. Okay. Then region two. From where to where? A to zero. A to B. And inside the Lima sign or inside the circle or between? Lima sign. Uh, what is it? Two plus sine squared. Okay, and then region 
3 from p to pi over 2 of circle. Okay, you follow? All right. Uh, the calculator, you can zoom in and out a little bit, and that sometimes helps. Okay. Um, putting those in your calculator requires skill, but we'll practice that more tomorrow. Would you shave these regions, please? Go. Just shave it. You sometimes on the AP test will be asked to go backwards. At the end of your unit, they'll say, what are you fudging? So what do you mean? Oh, I think I needed to tell you, theta 1 is, did I tell you that? Yeah. Oh. oh, that's, theta 1 is here. Theta 2 is here. Why is there a plus 2 pi? That's a great question. Why is there a plus 2 pi here? Not because it's, it's, it's double. This this is stored as a negative angle. Call it maybe negative 1. Okay? So if you're going to go this way, then it needs to be, that angle needs to be made greater than this angle. So it's pointing a positive way. Two pi pi. Okay? Alright, and the last one, are we good here? How are we doing? This is... Oh, oh, going to talk, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the whole bomb game. Continue. Zero to theta two, R two. Stops at theta two. Okay. All right. This is rough. Every year. Every year rough. All right. Last night's over. Here we go. Stay till after lunch. Yeah. All right. Let's go through this. If we. On this one, if we need to go into it tomorrow, I will, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe yeah. I should just collect it and see if it's fine. What if you did try it? Yeah. 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 It seems like yesterday's set of ballet, I do see a lot of that. I went in yesterday and got the ballet. Oh, that's 
Geometric, it might sometimes uh, it helps me to write that one. Wait, don't you? Okay. This. What kind of series is this? Geometric f of one would be the series like that. Okay. This is geometric. R is the tangent of one, which is greater than one. So this. test, yeah, but looking at the multiple choices, it feels like they wanted you to not do that. Not do that. Yeah. They wanted to sum. Direct comparison test doesn't find the sum. So how should you approach this? Partial fraction decomposition. This is the decomposed. If you decompose it, I got three halves. Okay? Did you get a series of 1 over n minus 1? Your partial fraction. Yes. Minus 1 over n plus 1. Yes. Okay. That would mean that if you start at where I said to change this to starting at n equal 2, because n equal 1 right. obviously causes all hectic breakers. So n equal 2 would be 1 minus 1 third. Yeah? Plus one half minus a fourth, no collapsing yet. One third minus a fifth. Now we're starting to see collapsing. The one and the one half are the things that don't collapse. One and a half is left. Okay. Now if I were proving the convergence, I would have to do a partial sum formula and all that. But because the question is just what does it converge to, if you feel like, oh, I see the collapsing, it's the all the other stuff. Then fine with me. Cool. Okay. Four. Let's <coughs> uh, be. That fine. Okay. I got that. Six. It says sequences, not the infinite sum. All right. So let's be clear. If this is, if I look at sequences. If that is 5, does that sequence converge? Yes. yes. What if I then gave you that? Does that series converge? No. no. Okay. If the sequence needs to converge, then I just it needs to have a limit. It doesn't have to be 0. It just has to have a limit. If the series is to converge, you need to be adding things that go to 0 to have a chance or adding them to the many. These, the terms, have to not only converge, but converge to 0. So this question is just, do they have a limit? It doesn't have to be zero, just do they have a limit? What is the limit of the term two? Zero. Zero. So does that convert? Yes. Yes, converges. What is the limit of the term two? Which goes, which one's bigger, e to the n or three to the n? Three to the n. So which one wins, the denominator or the numerator? Denominator. So what is the limit of the term? Zero. Does that convert? It does. And the last one, which one wins, the numerator or the denominator? The numerator. The terms here go infinite, so that diverges. The answer is two. Okay? Um, this bad boy, this is too bad. Yes. Thank you.
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Locked up. Uh, seven, did you get C? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, is this, did this come up? All right. So seven with C, eight. Certainly you had to break this into two different, totally different things. This is partial fractions, yeah? Yes. That becomes something like 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 3. Uh, with a little bit of telescoping experience, we'll start to see that the bigger the gap there is between those numbers, the longer it takes to see the pattern of convergence. And I got something like 1 in 5, 6 for the partial fraction decomposition telescoping sum. Yes? Okay. For the geometric, I have a sum of 1, 6. So the total sum is 2. Okay, the telescoping is 1 in 5, 6. The geometric should be 1, 6. Total sum is 2. Um, whatever that next question is, which is hard to read, but I guess it's one, maybe. Um, which of the, if the integral converged to pi over 2, which must be true? The series diverges? No, that's ridiculous. The series converges? Yes. yes. The series converges to the exact same number? No, it is 2 over. Okay. Um, this is a P series. Oh no, it's not a P series. It's not even a series. Here, yeah. Sorry. Uh, but we know that this will converge if the overall power of this needs to be greater than one. Greater than one. So P over three needs to be greater than one. So P needs to be greater than three. The answer is two. Okay. Uh, I think we did most of this one was the only one we didn't do. Did you try the integral test? Okay. Did it converge or diverge? Did you get something like the log of the log? Yes. Yeah, okay, that's fine. All right. Integral test. Uh, let's make this real quick. What did you say here? Jimmy uses, do I not have, oh, there is a question in there. Something about Jimmy. Jimmy needs A to be greater than zero. Okay. Only then would the direct comparison test be conclusive. Um, is this a question? I don't think so. I think I've seen that before. I wonder if I jumped this. Maybe that was your next question. How about this? Is this the next question? This isn't the next question, right? No, it's what you wrote in. It's like, which of the following will lead to it? Oh, it feels like I didn't update my slides. All right, sorry. Uh, let's go here. Um, the next one is... 1 over n squared minus 1. Did you compare it to 1 over n squared? Yeah. And was it conclusive or not? Inconclusive. It was inconclusive. Do you want to see what the work looks like or are you good? Okay. Um, 1 over n minus 1. Did you compare it to a harmonic 1 over n? Yeah. And was it conclusive or not? Conclusive, and what did it conclude? They diverge. Okay. What about 1 over n to the 1.1 1 .1 plus 1 versus n to the 1.1, 1 .1, which is the P series, and it converges. Was this conclusive or not? Yes. Yeah, you got less than finite, which is conclusive. It must be finite. It converges. And the last one. 
1 over root n plus 1. Did you compare it to 1 over root n? And did you find that it was inconclusive? Yes. All right. All right. Um, this bad boy here, 2 over 3 squared plus 1 plus 2 over 4 squared plus 1 plus 2 over 5 squared plus 1 infinitely long. This in summation notation is what? 2 over 3 squared plus 1. 2 over 2 squared plus 1. We'll finish going over tomorrow. Have a nice day. Yeah. Oh, tell him I said hey back. It was a fun sheet. Fun sheet, fun sheet. It was true on both counts. The last two problems. I don't know how to answer. One of them on the. The factorial over n. Oh, uh, yeah. You guys actually don't have the skills to do that one. Okay. Uh, my, 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 my bad. <laughs> cosine squared over x squared plus 1 or something. That that also is looking hard. Oh, uh, no. That you could that you could do by direct comparison. Yeah, but yeah, I don't You'd have to say cosine is less than or equal to 1, and then gradually build out the rest. Yeah, that's a good one. But the factorial one was... That was a ratio test problem. That should not have been on this. Although, Amanda Dyke got it. Or he. He did. Uh,
All right, I need to clear this out. Where's everybody? Do -do -do. Are we learning things today? Oh, yeah, we're learning a lot. Every single problem. I'm being there was only one problem that you could not do. All right. Will you do? Those three, 12, 13, and 15, 4, 1, Mr. Rickman. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I put this into this telescope, but I just put it into the assumption to me. Yeah, it's diverse. It's diverse. But, 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 but can I have my homework back? No, I got the yeah, you would be very interested. You wouldn't want to be here. And then you would get a two on the AV calculator. Maybe. No, it's still recording.